There's another article that I have here that was written by a Dr. David R. Seaman, DC, Doctor of Chiropractic, MS, DACBN, in 1998, Sports Chiropractic and Rehabilitation Magazine. Now, that's a fairly big, long article, but I have excerpts of it because I, I pass these out at some of my uh, seminars and stuff that I do so that people can see where this is. And Dr. Seaman, who I, he, who I know personally, I've given him golf lessons, and, and he found me out because he heard about what I was doing and he was very interested because I talked about physiology and the body and, and a swing that helps you not uh, you know, hurt yourself. And, and so conversing from there, Dr. Seaman started out in the article on page 47. It was about an eight-page article from about 45 to 47. And on, on page, uh, excuse me, 45 to about 53 or more. So it's a, it was a quite a long article. And on page 47, doc, Dr. Seaman says, the modern golf swing emphasizes a backswing that is characterized by a large shoulder turn with restricted hip turn. And this kind of goes back to what Diamond Ben says, swinging, uh, is it, if this is the big greatest swing uh, ever, why have the greatest golfers in the history of the game taken a full swing? Now, Dr. Seaman also goes on on page 47 to say, the follow through or finish position is characterized by a right shoulder that points toward the target. This, that is a position of minimal spinal rotation to the left side. Now, I think at this point, he's talking more about the transition, or, or as I call it, the paradigm shift in the golf swing, where we had the long, big flowing swings up to the finish, like Sam Snead and Julius Burroughs and a lot of the oldest players, and where there was a huge turn. But today, I think he's referencing what some people originally, and it started out as the X factor, where you turn your shoulders a lot, but you restrict your, your hip turn. But it's still a big turning swing, and it's still parallel to what everyone's teaching. He goes on to say, on, on the end of page 47, he makes this comment. He says, the remainder of this article will refute much of what is held to be true by modern golf instruction. So, in other words, he's going to be telling you through chiropractic in the body that the predominance of what is taught in golf instruction has anything to do with full turns and parallel is not the optimum way to swing a club based on human anatomical design. He, he then also went on to say, it is time that golfers make an effort to be consistent and precise with the terms they use to describe the golf swing. Yeah, he believes that there's too many, too many terms out there we throw around that, that if you want to set up a number of people here to talk about them, that, that, that you would even get the same answer from them as to what they are. And I've always been precise about my terms, that they define exactly what I'm saying, both in, in terms of the words as well as the pictures they create in our mind. Well, Dr. Seaman went on. And he said later on in the article on page 49, clearly the so-called muscles of the back do not play a major role in spinal torsional rotation. Therefore, they are incapable of storing energy and power for the downswing. And that's almost the biggest thing we talk about. Use your big muscles because your big muscles are going to create the power. And they're talking about the big muscles of the back. Well, he refutes that right here in the, in the article in that statement. On page 51, Dr. Seaman said, I was unable to find any literature related to biomechanics, kinesiology, or exercise physiology in which the term torsion twisting, coil, pivot, wind-up, or torque gap are used to describe power generation in human locomotion. Therefore, these terms do not appropriately explain why or how power is generated in the golf swing. Also on page 51, he says, the real power in the golf swing seems to be generated during the transition from backswing to downswing. Later on, on page 52, he says, as mentioned above, a properly timed weight transfer is most responsible for generating power. And then again on page 52 he states, therefore it is appropriate to recommend that golfers shorten the length of their backswing, minimize torsion rotation, and refine the timing of the weight transfer to maximize the generation of elastic energy. That is what I'm teaching in the, in the, in the surge swing. When we make our transition and, and we start with a lateral slide, all the muscles are being stretched because the arms and the upper and, and club, uh, hands, arms, and club, are, as they're still going up, the lower body starts to the left, which creates all this stretching in the muscles from the, from the legs and the hamstrings all the way up through the hips, the back, up to the, up to the shoulders, and up to the, uh, down the arms, and make that and stretch elasticity for the arms to eventually create greater strength, uh, length of them, and then they straighten out at impact and, and release on through the finish. Therefore, it is appropriate to recommend that golfers shorten the length of their backswing, minimize torsion rotation, and refine timing of the weight transfer mac to maximize the generation of elastic energy. It's so important, I just repeated it. 
And he goes on to say, at no time should the hands pass behind the ankles during the backswing. Therefore, he's recommending that I, that you don't go into the sacred burial ground. He's recommending the limited turn to go with the shorter backswing. And lastly, the last thing I have here, he says, according to available golf literature, only PGA Master Professional Don Trayen advocates the swing method described in this section. When you put it to the test, scientifically, the search swing is the swing.